Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Three, two, one. One. <laughs> Welcome everybody back to the Build Different podcast. This is episode 11 mm. of That's a different one, one. conversation. So yes, we are back with some non-sports, good conversation. We're going to go over a lot. You know, there's a war going on, unfortunately. Um, the music scene, Halloween, because this episode is going to be released on Halloween. So it's going to get a little spooky in here. Um, you know, <laughs> life has been life has been life in for, for your boy. Yeah, it's been life. Um, so I'm here with Matt, King Matt, Slat, whatever you want to call him. King Kem, Kemalicious, <laughs> whatever you want to call him. I'm your host, Holy. Thomas Saxby, and we are here. How are you guys doing? Chilling, big dog. Chilling. I can't complain. I get better with time, man. Uh, better with time. Like that's some a, fine yes. Wine. Look him up on, on Instagram. Come <laughs> on, man. That's it. Talk nah, about fuck it. with that. Fuck with that. So I'm a dad again. Um, Congratulations. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, to a very beautiful baby boy. Um, he's healthy. He's good. He's that's here. He's in the back just sleeping. So hopefully... You know, we don't wake him up or whatever. Slumped. Um, but you know, it was it, it was a great time. It was beautiful. Birth is like that's something I feel like a lot of humans should feel, bro. Like that is it's a it's a fucking top tier feel. I Matt, I can't wait till you have kids, bro. Word. Yeah. When Matt <laughs> yo, when Matt has kids and I'm gonna be there in the background. I'm like, yeah, I'm gone, <laughs> baby Matt. Nah, Matt was there. Matt was there with oh, me. Yeah, I was in the trenches. <laughs> um, but it was a beautiful time. You know, her water broke. I think she gave birth like 12 or 13 hours after. Yeah, which it was, was, cool, it was, it bro. was like 13. Yeah. Um, pushed for a while, but like, you know, it, it was, it was beautiful. He's here. Um, it's crazy wow, what having kids will do for you too. Yeah. Like, I kid you not. Like I got a kick in my ass of motivation now. Like. I don't know. I I was motivated to clean the house for like the first time. You know? <laughs> like I clean, I clean. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, that was, today was like the first time. I was like, yeah, I'm cleaning for Hayden. So <laughs> let's go. I'm gonna get everything done. Like let's go. Um, but yeah, man, okay. being a dad, bro. Hey, man. Proud of you, my boy. Top yeah, tier man. shit. Top tier shit. Top tier shit. And man, it's it's something that, like you said, uh, when you have a chance. You know, and you have everything the way that it. Or excuse me, cut this. I'm fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta bring that back. <laughs> <laughs> cut this. Hold I'm up. fucked up. I'm fucked up. Let me bring that I'm back. That. If you get the chance to experience it, man, it's some amazing shit. It's nothing that if you plan to do it, of course, it's gonna go the way that you want. You're gonna your feelings are gonna yeah, merge. Right, right, right. But even if you don't plan it. You know what I mean? And how you feel, man. And yeah. like you said, how yeah. you wake up and it's like a fucking 360. I know, It's something bro. that you have to take care of. You're accountable for that only knows you. Can't see yet. Only smells. Can't talk. Yeah, shit bro. Is fucking... <laughs> it's Look, crazy because, like, bro, I mean, I'd be looking at my girl like, damn, we made that, bro. Like, that's, it's just, it's crazy. Having them lay on my chest and just... Like, like last night, like, he was on my chest. He was knocked. Every time he comes and, like, lays on my chest, it's great because he's just mm-hmm. calm and out. I, I went to sleep, too. Deja got some videos. It was funny. Um, but I was I was knocked. He was knocked. Like, it's just great just looking down at, at your seat and just, like, damn, man. Like, it's it's really a, it's a good, it's a good fucking feeling. It's definitely mm-hmm. a good feeling. Fucking Anything right. else to add to that? Or are we... No, we're moving on. All right. So how we're gonna open the show truly is that we're gonna talk about some music. Every time we got Kem here, we gotta have a good music conversation because Kem is always knee deep in music. Pause. I think I don't know. Music is life. Um, and but life is music. Ooh. Album that has come out that we haven't really gotten to talk about because it's been you know three four weeks since our last different conversation episode was Drake's album has dropped. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't that great. <laughs> it wasn't for the dogs. So much so that Drake is like very... I, I think he is very defensive about the album. Because I know y'all saw him go in on Joe Budden um, for criticizing he, the album. He just usually doesn't clap back. Right. And he's clapping back. Yeah, because I, I think he knows too that... You know, for me, it's just when you call the album for all the dogs, I'm expecting an album for all the dogs. You know, one, you didn't even have Future on the album. 
Like, yeah, which like, I expected. That was <laughs> fucking sad because he's for the dogs. <laughs> yeah, if, any, if anyone is for the dogs, it's it's, it's future. future, bro. Future's for the dogs, and he wasn't on the album. And then the album just wasn't for the dogs. Like, of course, there was there good music on the album. Yes, there was some good songs. Music was was cool, but when there's a specific vibe you're looking for and it's not delivered, I think that's the most important thing about music is the delivery. It just wasn't it wasn't delivered. That's my honest take. Man. No, yeah. Okay, we, we, I'm gonna let you go first. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. respectfully. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, like I said, I I'm cool with the album, but I'm cool with every Drake album pretty much. Okay. So that's like, I don't think Drake actually has a really bad album except for More Life. Just I personally don't like that album, <laughs> but it's it's more of a playlist like rather than an album. So mm-hmm. I mean, it's like kind of in that mixtape field where I mean you don't really count it as a official release, but um. Yeah, like, the only thing I'd say about it is, when you think of For All the Dogs, you think of some grittiness, you think of some yeah. rapping, you think of just, like, something that we can play bumping in the car. We can talk our point. shit, you we know can, Yeah, I mean? we could, yeah. A, a little bit of braggadociousness, a little bit of just, like, yeah, something that you can... Braggadociousness. Yeah, just something that you can be, like, feeling yourself while listening to, like, oh, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't that. <laughs> the only song, really, that was... That was kind of uh, first person shooters with J Cole, which was um, great. They were really which, talking. Oh yeah, shit. they were they were spitting, but it's just like at least that album provided kinda... a number one hit to that. Like that was for the dogs. <laughs> like that that was. Hold cool. on, wait, 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 and then I'm gonna let you go. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even that song was wild gimmicky because fucking J Cole skated on that shit, and this motherfucker had to come on the back end talk about. Number one for the Beatles. Number one. No, whatever the fuck. From Mike. Beatles. Come on, stop. But Number was, one to beat Mike. But come on, but stop playing. That's because. But that was a fire line. Come on. I was about no. to brag about that line. But, I love that line. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, but no. listen, that was only because he got treated on his own song, man. Well, I mean, but. Like, that, to me. So that's no, what I, 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 under, that I in, com- that completely agree. J. Cole, mm-hmm. he walked on that song. Yes, yes but, he did. But and the thing that. is, when you, yes, when you have I want to see that more from J. That. I in my bad. I don't You're mean to like keep completely keep, keep your point in your head. Mm-hmm. The one thing that I love is that this is the J. Cole I wanna see. This mm-hmm. is the J. Cole mm-hmm. that I've been waiting to see. Mm-hmm. Like a uh, fucking cocky, like, mm-hmm. yeah, I did my shit in this game and now mm-hmm. I'm about to tell you about it. Mm-hmm. That's what I wanna see from J. Cole moving forward. I hope that like that's what we're about to see. Cause he ha- he does have a couple other songs where he's like that mm-hmm. too recently. Mm-hmm. Um Bunch. And um, Benny, that was like a Benny yeah. verse. That was like that was equal to a uh uh, Benny the Butcher verse yeah. that he delivered, and on I need that, that bro. Because he, he showed out regardless of yeah. who he was on the song. If, if the right. fall off included Drake yeah. in that verse, right? Yeah. And you know, what and, I mean? if, and if the and fall off is anything like that, I'm gonna be happy because mm-hmm. that's what I expected from the last. To time. me, yeah. I just think, like talking about that point, mm-hmm. with the ye- last year and a half that we've gotten of J Cole, mm-hmm. I don't expect any song he's on mm-hmm. that isn't his own to where somebody else is gonna out rap him. Yeah. So to me, mm-hmm. I, right when I saw that they actually had a collab, because there was always rumors, and then uh, Drake brought J. Cole out on his tour. Mm-hmm. J. Cole asked if he could be on his album, and then Drake said, only if I'm on your next album. And so they had that little exchange mm-hmm. on stage. I'm like, oh, okay, this yeah. they're going to be on each other's next albums. And so I saw it coming that he was on the album, but immediately I was just like, J. Cole's going to smoke him on this mm-hmm. album. So I didn't go in with no expectation of, all right, J. Cole's going to win it, but Drake's going to be right here. Now, I figured it was going to be J. Cole's going to win it mm-hmm. and Drake's going to be here. Yeah. So I didn't have much expectation. Yes, it was gimmicky. There were, there were some corny lines by Drake. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah. But there's always corny lines yeah. by Drake. Yes. I don't go into most of Drake's albums expecting a lot of, like, thought-provoking bars. Like, this is, <laughs> like, it's not Tuscan leather yeah, yeah, type uh-huh. of shit. Tuscan leather fucking 6 p.m. in uh, New York. Like, there's there's certain songs where it's like, all right, I know Drake, I know Drake spits on those, mm-hmm. but there's not all those. Mm-hmm. We can't have a whole album of those, and I don't there expect a whole is, album but of any those. song he usually does with people, he, I don't know. I just usually, like usually he brings his own energy. Like, uh, there we go. what was the song with Dirk? Well, um, that's a good point. What, the, like, um, him, on the, his last album? I don't, well, it, well, it was a single. It, was, it, it wasn't even an album. I think it was a single with him and Dirk, just, uh, with Drake and Dirk, not Jake. Okay. Dirk. Like Jake, the, even that Drake and Dirk song, like Drake, Drake Hold did on. his own thing. He slid on that bitch, but I think mm-hmm. it was a single. It wasn't on any album, but okay. he, yeah, J Cole smoked him. Yeah, respectfully. Right. But I mean, I, I get what you're trying to say though, uh-huh. Kim. Like Drake, usually when I think when it's reversed, when he's on other people's tracks mm-hmm. and it has nothing to do with his album, I think he, yeah, he goes. Hey, Laugh now, cry later. Sorry. 
But when the features are on his Thank album, bro, he do be, you know, he do be letting people really outshine him. Because I, I thought 21 outshined him on, on the other song on the album as well. I don't think but. 21 really had the best of verses. He had a 21 verse. And it was I, cool. I, and I get it because there was the girl in the middle of the but song. But I feel like, like that song, and given, yeah, that t- yeah. that took the momentum away. Yes. When you had that 30 second skit in the middle yeah. of her. But I feel like that was just a leftover from her loss. That's what I think it was. Mm. I don't think that was a song meant for this that's album. I feel point. like that was just a leftover from her loss. That's a good point. Take like a little lazy out here. I feel like that's Same what that <laughs> was. <laughs> yeah, I fuck with that too. Yeah. 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 But I mean, yeah, I mean, it's still like a bottom five, four album in his discography. Mm-hmm. I feel like every year we go on, we're just getting bottom tier albums, right? In which a bottom tier album from Drake is still like some people's best albums. Right. So, like, I'm not smoking Drake when I say that, but he, he's definitely past his prime as far as whole album experiences. He might still put out one banger single in a year mm-hmm. where I'm like, oh, that's going to go in his all time, like, mm-hmm. song list. But mm-hmm. a whole album experience, I feel like we're past the prime of Drake. So. Yeah. I think music itself, you know what I mean? Yes. Like, it's past the prime of what, yeah. you know what I mean? Just Because really it's tough to squeeze out a good album these days. Yeah, like because it's nobody, tough. no people wants to be heard fast. The, yeah. You know what I mean? The content has to be consumed pretty quick. People don't like it if you got an album that's more than, like, 15 songs. Because like, people don't want to listen for, like, an hour 30 it, on an album. Exactly. It's Everything's, like 57 minutes. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like the limit for, like, albums right, right, right now. Right, right, you know right. what I mean? Regardless of how many songs yeah, you have. It can't be in the game putting out 31 you know songs. Songs on a track. No, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> but I like you I like the I mean? point that um, you said when we were talking about before mm-hmm. when we were creating the episode. Uh-huh. If you want to go ahead with that take, what about um, um, about how he skates on everything? Well, that this album felt like Jake was kind of dumbing oh, himself. To, oh yes, yeah. dumbing himself down. Like it sounded like he was kind of making himself sound like the music of today more than leading. You know what I'm saying? How he yeah. normally does when yeah, somebody yeah, yeah. else comes out. He's kind of... Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I meant even about the song at the end of the J. Cole's. You know what I mean? Right, so, right. I'm like, man, come on. Why yeah. would you... You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I, I like it because it was like... Because he, he, knew, he knew it was probably going to be that song that mm-hmm. was going to be the one that yeah. got him... Yeah. Past Michael. Out of that, out of all the songs that right. came out, he, mm-hmm. I think he knew that that song right there was going to be a number one hit. Because come on, it's mm-hmm. it's Drake and J Cole. Mm-hmm. Even if the song was ass, I feel like it still would have been number one because we're all going to listen That's to it. Yeah. We're all going right. to stream it because it's fucking Drake and J Cole mm-hmm. on one yeah. track. What the fuck? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think that's why he spit the the corny bars that he did because he knew this was going to be. Yeah, that's so yeah, yeah, I think yeah. he was feeling himself too a little bit. Well, I just feel like, like to <laughs> me, to like, me. <laughs> With this yeah. album, usually when Drake has somebody on one of his songs, or he's on, so- huh? <laughs> Mad snacks. <laughs> Don't forget to take pictures. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I thought you said Matt snapped. I was like, what did I mean? No, I didn't no. say shit yet. <laughs> Matt, Maddie snacks. <laughs> <laughs> Um, usually when Drake is either featuring on someone else's song that he's never collabed with or they're on his song, yes. usually Drake guides them through the song of, all right, I'm going to do my thing, mm-hmm. but I'm going to still leave it there for mm-hmm. you to where you snap. Mm-hmm. On this album, there's a couple people he never really collabed with before, and he was kind of doing their thing. And their thing Yo. isn't a thing yet. Like Yeet, Yeet's very new in the game. Mm-hmm. Very new. Rich baby daddy. Just, let's talk about it. Uh-huh. Just just came out from being underground and mm-hmm. shit. And he was like, there's there's memes all over the internet mm-hmm. where he pretty much was just like up fucking Yeet's ass yeah. doing Yeet's thing. And I'm like, yeah. this is just like, yeah. and yeah, let's let's go on about yeah. that. Rich song. baby daddy, bro. I thought was one of the best songs on the album. You know, let that coochie breathe. <laughs> You know, I mean, like, it's just such a fucking great jingle. Um, was it for the dogs? No. Um, but, you know, I thought it was a really fire song. Hands on your knees. Hands on your knees. Okay. I think yeah. it was a fire song. A fire song. Okay. Sexy Red walked on it. I thought Drake got on it and walked on it. Sexy Red, Red walked on she, it? Sexy Red walked on that song. Sexy Red, <laughs> cause that was her only contribution to the rap game, I think, ever. And I'm fine with it. Okay. Let that coochie breathe, Matt. I don't know. No, we're good. We're, I'm not. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. She did not walk. She walked her ass out of the industry. She didn't walk on <laughs> shit, bro. Nah, that Thought was that. That's she, one of the best songs of all time. She is quite mid-tier in every aspect of her life. I'm just oh, yeah. saying. No, that's for sure. But that's what it takes to be famous these days. I'm just it's saying. Quite, that's mid-tier. what it takes to be famous No, you gotta be. You got to be high tier in something. Oh, She's man. not. So how exactly. She... So what the, the coochie fuck? breathing? She looked like Thugger, bro. Get out of here. The coochie breathing. 
and sexy and red put it, put it thug. I mean, I think Thug's a little cuter. I, I mean, of course, no, I'm of course you guys are not going <laughs> to like it because, like you guys just said, like it's Drake's making it seem like it's music for like people that are like in this generation like hot girls mm-hmm. and shit like hands on your knees of course girls are gonna shake their ass to that so. and me so <laughs> <laughs> I mean yeah so like <laughs> of course everybody's gonna like it but I can see why you guys don't did you personally cause I would see why females like like city girl stuff where they do also that type of I, stuff I, did I, you I, like that song Okay. Like, all right. Now, like, respectfully. Okay, all right. Like, all right. Okay. Come on, okay. Okay. Up in the club, I've just heard. I've heard. Like, I've heard, it's, I've it's, heard it's, way more songs exactly like that that are better. So man, it's just I'm like, not. Listen, I'm not saying like as a song like it's lyrically great. Oh, I'm just I know saying, you're not a, saying that. It's just to me. It's just a jingle. Like it's a stupid <laughs> ass song. Mm-hmm. If I heard it in lyrics. the club, I'm all right with it. But yeah. if I hear in any other setting. I'm smacking the shit out of whoever's on Ox. <laughs> like, I'm not in any other setting, bro. If I'm at um, the club or a party, I'm cool with it. Now, that's now, it. For, now, to talk, that's it. now, to talk about an actual good female lyricist, because I don't think, you know, because our episode got deleted, mm-hmm. um, Doja Cat, Paint the Town Red, is a fucking oh, no, that, banger. Nah, she snapped Phenomenal that song. song, bro. She might be like... Banger. She crazy. might be losing her mind, yeah, but yeah, banger. Yeah. She, no, nah, she's a great artist, but she might just be off her fucking rocker but she's a good artist I, I fuck with her yeah 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 what'd you think about that song Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> nah Kevin's a, a good artist she's it, a good yeah, artist she's a good artist she's that's artist. it yeah. you know what I'm saying she, like, he went straight from straight she's a good artist She's an artist. She's an artist, man. Like she, no, but for no, real, I feel she's you. able yeah. to. She is a true artist, man. Like, and she bounces from genre to genre with ease. Yeah, you yeah. understand what I'm saying? And like, not saying she's like this person, like talent wise, but as far as like being very experimental mm-hmm. and doing things for shock value that mm-hmm. are going to get people mm-hmm. watching you and then you mm-hmm. put out something good, she has mm-hmm. that Kanye-esque feel, not mm-hmm. on the level of Kanye, clearly. Not saying that. Well, Kanye's an all-time she, great, she, but... She could but very I, much be, like, the female Kanye. Where, well, like, obviously, she's not as big as Kanye. Mm-hmm. I don't know if any female can actually, like, achieve that. I don't know if like, anyone the, can achieve that. Like, the ones from that. the past. Like, I think Nicki Minaj has definitely achieved that. Mm-hmm. Um, Taylor Swift, obviously, but that's a different well, I'm talking about Kanye. No, but, not, not like, a Kanye. I mean, like, like you said, like, her music is, it's, like, it's different from, like, the shit that... Yeah. And, but it's different in a way that it's a banger, and that's mm-hmm. the Kanye feel that you got. Like, it wasn't anything like what was currently going on. It was very much so different, but it wasn't a bad different at all. Right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, it, yeah, was yeah. going 100%. on with her? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, in the interpretation of the videos, like, the... the the devil shit and shit like that is just a interpretation. You right, know what I'm saying? Right, like right. she's telling a story through something. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then everybody, it allows people to have their conversations. Own, yeah. You know what I mean? And then at one of the way, day, someone's gonna, you'll be shit. talking about it. At, the, at like the Met Gala, she yeah. was dressing that all red thing, yeah. head to toe, and you yeah. can barely even make her out of it. Yeah. yeah she's. It's just a lot of like theatrical stunts yeah. to get you watching her. Given. I feel like people need to chill out with all this devil worship yeah, giving shit on art. stage. Like, all right, that's chill a lot. Out. Yeah, that's a chill little. Out. That's a little. Uncomfy. Like, you guys like, are having <laughs> kids at your stage at your performances, and then you got like devil worshiping shit, cutting off goats' heads in videos. Given it's all you know yeah, CGI, yeah. but it's mm-hmm. all creepy shit. Mm-hmm. It's you know chill out with it. And now, and I, I don't chill mean out. now. I don't. I now <laughs> with my point. I don't mean that females can't like replicate Kanye or like they. Can't I don't think be, anyone can replicate. Or like Kanye. I'm not saying like Nicki Minaj and them were like successful and these people won't be, but like. The way music's headed and the way humanity's getting a little, you know, on the shitty end when it in <laughs> regards to judging females, mm-hmm. it's going to be hard for a female. Because, like, look at Ice Spice, for example. She's huge, but, like, everyone just, like, turning her, you know, into a sexual fucking object, mm-hmm. like, this True. and that. Yes, yes, like, yes, yes, yes. Oh, she's nothing like Nikki, like, already. I hate when people like, just compare immediately. It's just like, So it's kind of like they're, like, they're, like, people are putting a ceiling already on Ice Spice, which I don't even think is fair. It's not like, fair at all. Yeah. And she's not even the same type of rap as, like, Nicki. Nicki was a rapper. Like, right, right. first and foremost, yeah, she got into her singing bag eventually, this and third. But she came out the gates rapping, like, lyrically. Ice Spice is rapping, but she's not, like, a lyrical fucking, like, she's not, like, a 
pen to paper and she type made of that like, so thought, she like, was just like she made that clearly obvious as day like because she like immediately after that first track she got like she went and hired people that were actually going to teach her how to rap because that was her yeah. basically you know admitting yeah. like i'm not the best rapper but now that i'm viral fuck given i, mean, I have seen a few freestyles of her like she's, she's doing getting, her thing she's, she's, getting, getting, she's getting better, better. Getting better. she's and, learning yeah and she has a few songs with Nicki minaj right they've exactly. been, they been working together yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shit, so, like, she's cool with that whole crowd yeah. she well, she's cool with Nicki. she's yeah, cool she's with taylor, taylor swift, swift bro. <laughs> bro she 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 got she's reached she's reaching herself out into the industry and that's smart yeah she's doing her thing yeah yeah, Shout yeah, out Ice yeah. Spice. Offset. How'd you think about that album? I liked it. Offset. Loved I liked it. it a lot. Loved yeah, it. I liked it yeah, a lot. I think it came out the same time as Drake, so it gave, it was kind of crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was, it made me have to dig into it a little bit. Yeah, more. you weren't feeling that album, you so you had to reach saying? for something. And I'm like, oh shit, like. Yeah, no, and that's okay, how it was, set. like, because that Drake album, okay, set. if like, Drake's did, album was good, I probably mm-hmm. wouldn't have listened to Offsets as, like, exactly. thoroughly as I did, exactly. or um, Sleepy Hollows as mm-hmm. thoroughly as I did, but because I was so empty from Drake's album, mm-hmm. yeah, I listened the fuck out of this album. And yeah, but was, this shit was coming out. Yeah, mm-hmm. and this, this album was fucking mm-hmm. smooth. I think Worth It is, like, I don't think it's a number one, but I feel like it should be, mm-hmm. like, his song with Don Tolliver. Yeah. Worth it. Mm-hmm. That's the that's um, one song I love. That is a fucking right. banger. Mm-hmm. His one with Future, Broad Day. That's okay. They, they slid mm-hmm. on that. Mm-hmm. I feel like it wasn't, you know, Future's best performance, mm-hmm. but they both slid on that. Mm-hmm. And just throughout the album, bro, like, he has um, a song with Lotto, you know, Cardi B. Mm-hmm. Like, even, bro, the songs that he was doing by himself, he was showing off different fucking flows. Like, mm-hmm. there wasn't one song that sounded like the other. I thought... It was just a really good well, fucking I mean, project. I, I always felt like Offset out of the three Migos was the always the more versatile mm-hmm. of the three. That's a good point. As far as like being able to change a flow off of the Migo flow mm-hmm. and doing their own thing. I always thought like Quavo was the best feature guy for other artists. Right. Take off out of when it was them three doing their thing, I thought Takeoff always slid on whatever was there. Yeah. But I felt like Offset was always the most versatile. He could do. He he was the one most meant to be a solo artist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I always felt like. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and agree with all. I believe that. Uh, you know, uh, rest in peace, Takeoff yes, was the 100%. best rapper. Um, Quavo was the star, and Offset was exactly like you said, the most versatile. Yeah, in between, he can be the star and the rapper at any given time. That was I such a good combo, all, man. Yeah, they were a great, great, great combination. Um, I yeah. actually watched something where um, Offset said like they probably won't get back together. You know what I mean? Because no, no. uh, take off was yeah. the glue. But Quavo, yeah, yeah, well, because him, him and Quavo yeah. have always had like a button heads thing. But they're getting, they're getting close though, Quavo and, and yeah, they, well, yeah, they just started, they just see. started you know hanging mean? back. Um, like Quavo said like like he made a post saying that we're family forever. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 just performing. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, or creating music. Oh, there was there was this there was this there was this interview with Imagine Offset the vibe recently the booth when they were making their songs. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. there was this video yeah. recently where uh, Offset said he was a uh, him and Quavo. They had gotten back like they reconciled. They're chilling. Mm-hmm. They had like a show thing, not mm-hmm. like a performance, but they're at something. And they were chopping it up. They were cooling. And then they went to, like, an after party. And they're in a booth. And they, there was a Migo song playing. Mm-hmm. And, bro, both of them, like, just, like, looked at each other. And it was just so sad. And right. them two, like, they're in a club. There's bitches everywhere. There's yeah. bottles getting popped. <laughs> uh, and they just said they felt so sad in that moment. I'm like, oh, wow. that's got to kill them. Yeah, that sucks. You got yeah. uh, you got anything else music? Related. Yeah, there was a couple of things that um during that same time, um then West Side Gun yeah. um album came out. Um and then you pray for me. You also in before that, during that same time you had that little Wayne mixtape. Yeah, Lil Wayne mixtape um, was cool. That was, it was fire. Mm, but I was know. going crazy for yeah. the um West Side Gun. It was Side a tough Gun listen. Shit. It was it. it was just in and out. It was only pretty much um if I'm being honest. It was five songs, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. but I wasn't I wasn't yo, a fan, ahead, man. man. I wasn't a fan, but no. given it's like no, it was it was just something Slip, little. Slip was my shit though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I, I like what that. was that? Oh, mm-hmm. there was one. So I, I gotta figure out the name uh-huh. real quick. Just talk talk real quick. Uh, <laughs> I gotta figure yeah, out so this Slip one song. Was, yeah, Slip was my only shit on there. Um, like you said, this was the first few songs, and then I'm like, okay. You know what I mean? Did I'm, Nas I'm came out, out of here? Yes. Yeah, that was. Uh huh. Yeah, that was a dream. Yeah, that as was usual. out. Yeah, yeah. him and hit boy last. They said that's the last Diddy one. Diddy drops. Oh man, that was. Um, listen. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you though. I did like the off the grid, bro. Like okay. it was. It, right. I was in and out with that. You yeah. know what I mean? No, because, same thing. I mean that's just not my thing. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. But it, it was. It was still cool to see yeah. it. But yo, did you see the shit? 
mm-hmm. where um, they found Tupac's killer or claimed yes. that they did. They, you know, he's going through trial. Mm-hmm. And then 50 Cent posted that Diddy got to get his lawyers up. Yeah, and then actually... Yo, movie. this goes back to a take that I had in, like, fucking high school where... I thought Diddy did it. I thought Diddy hired the hits of <laughs> Tupac and Biggie. Mm-hmm. So he can get all the fucking everything Bro. that was from that era. And <laughs> all the, obviously he worked close with Diddy. So he got that whole fucking empire that he built. Bro, but, there's only one person left alive that started that ret label with Diddy. Other than Diddy. There's only one person left alive. Everyone else was murdered. Yeah. Like... Diddy, Diddy's got a way about him, you know? Yeah. I'm not saying he did or didn't do anything, but I'm just saying but, there's always something around Diddy. And no one would and believe that he I'm did just, it, too. So it's, you know, big brain. Blame, there, it, on, blame it on Shug Knight, because Shug Knight looked obvious, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, <laughs> Shug, Shug he probably pushed that, you know, he probably pushed that a little bit more. Well, when you they, know when that Shug and Tupac got shot together. So, like, at the end of the day, like... In yeah, the they're in the same Shug, car. In the Shug car is car just a fucking two, big dude. The car so that he, Tupac got killed in, Shug Knight got he was, shot. He was a driver, well yeah. Too. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? So, if that was the case, you know... Um, because Shug probably should have died, but he's a bigger dude. Like, Tupac, like, you know, he was a smaller, mm-hmm. smaller guy. So, like, he a couple bullets more. is going to, yeah. Mm-hmm. Shug Knight, like, he's a bigger guy. So, he could probably eat, you mm-hmm. know, a couple before, mm-hmm. you know, it gets but dark. But, yeah, man, um, it's, it's hard to say. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would, actually man, you'd be wouldn't good. give an opinion on that shit. <laughs> We'd be good if we got shot. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all silly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try it out. No, I just. Oh, he's wilding, like, for what, though? Fuck, though. For the pod shit? <laughs> gun for the pod. Me and Matt just... die trying. I shoot Matt in the arm. 50, give him the bro? gun. He shoots me in the arm. Chill out. I die. It's like that. Um, but yeah, you got anything else on that? Yeah, just... Um, listen, man. Look out for something. I'm going to be honest. If y'all listen to like West Side Gunner, y'all like hip hop, I don't know. Like, listen to Stove God Cooks. Okay. okay? Like, Stove God um, Cooks. In the last few albums that West Side Gunner have been putting out, he has been letting him like feature on, on the albums. And okay. Shit. And the dude doesn't put out like... He puts out, like, he had, the only album that he put out was, like, called Reasonable Drought, okay? Mm-hmm. Right. He, other than that, he's, like, this mysterious hip-hop. He just appears. Like, appears yeah. on shit, and it's fucking hard as hell, though, bro. Like, super fire. Still got books. Oh, and yeah, yeah. the album's with Rock Marciano. Yes. It's a collab. Exactly. Baby. Okay. That, um, Reasonable Drought, right? So yeah. that's his first album. And check it out, he's actually from Syracuse. Oh, well, wow. it's, that's Griselda shit, bro. Exactly. They they work it's with that local. Up. They it's work up. local, that's man. That's Griselda, bro, I fuck Yo, with so them I heavy. Love it. Um, yeah. So that album is the latest installment, and um, and then you pray for me. But I love hearing Stove got on his shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like. You know, no, I'll get in tune. I, I don't. Yeah. I never even heard of this guy before. But no, the, yo. So at my job, um, I yeah. So at my job. Where I work, there's a there's a resident there, and he was, like, drunk off of his ass. Respectfully. And he was just, like, he said mad loud. I remember I told him, because we were just chilling, chopping it up. It was, like, you know, 1 a.m. Okay. You know, they get to go out in the courtyard and chill if they want, you uh-huh. know, do whatever they want to do. And I normally, I go out there sometimes, chop it up, make sure everyone's okay, go back inside. Um, and he was sitting there, um, and, you know, me and him were just chopping it up. Told him that I had a kid coming. He was, like... Oh, it's another American baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> and I don't oh, know. That shit, shit just replays in my head over and over. Oh, and just, An American baby. Like, it's just, it's wild. Like, old, pe- old people, they, like, when they're stuck in their way, fucking hilarious. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, because it's just, like, proud American shit. <laughs> um... But speaking of something like that, not entirely the uh, war. Not at all, but yeah. <laughs> uh, um, um, so we got some ugliness going on in the oh, yeah, world. It's world War Three, baby. Yeah, Matt's it's been starting. Matt's it's been starting. really, really locked, locked, locked into everything that's going on. So I'll let you lead with the oh, shit. But right. yeah, I mean, our age old Israel Palestine. You know, it's we've gotten so many versions of this, but it's popped off again, and it's it's ugly. Yeah, very ugly. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, it goes back to forever, though. I mean, yeah. like it's it's centuries, centuries old. You know, it's what like I mean? it's like the age old war. You know yeah, what I absolutely. mean? Absolutely. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just an age old war. I think uh, it was actually put to rest mostly up until like 1948 yeah. or something yeah. like that, right? And they yeah. take back on again, and then 
you know, but listen, man, with it being as old as it is and that amount of people still subscribing to that, it's, it's nothing, right. you know what I mean, that you could actually Oh, do. yeah, absolutely. And then when you think about us Americans, listen, low key, um, how much do you think we uh, deal with um, Israel yearly? Just a guess. What do you mean by deal with? Like, as far as like... Uh, Foreign affairs, goods, just shit. trading goods in between the country and. I mean, they're they're big allies. So I mean, fifty I billion, billion. Yeah. fifty billion to the country. Yeah, you know so. what I mean. Um, a year, okay. Yeah. Um, like so, just think about those kind of things. But we already have sent troops over, as you said. You've been kicking. I know you're gonna, you know what I mean, tear it up. But it's just, <laughs> it's a crazy thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, Abrahamic yeah. religions, man. If you know anything about them, yeah. You know what I mean? It goes in stages. You know what I mean? The Jews consider themselves the oldest. Then it's the Christians. Then it's the Muslims. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and, you know, having these different groups at this heightened sense right now, right. you know what I mean? It's just very, very scary for the rest of the world. You yeah. know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, how mm-hmm. this shit can just spiral out of control. Right. Right. The biggest thing for me is whenever war starts over because of religions. Yeah. She's like, religions is always something that's supposed to bring peace mm-hmm. and it's supposed to bring prosperity. Yeah, and I hate that and shit. that's why I feel like like Gaza and then, uh, I mean, uh, not Gaza, because it's not Gaza, mm-hmm. it's Hamas. Mm-hmm. But Hamas and Hasbula and mm-hmm. shit, like just all these terrorist organizations, just like they're using religion mm-hmm. to do these acts. And mm-hmm. it's just, it puts a bad name on religions, man. Mm-hmm. It puts a bad name on Muslims, puts a bad name on... Uh, Jews, it puts a bad name on Christians. It just puts a bad name on everything. It's just, mm-hmm. it's very sad, very, very fucking sad. But yeah. um, cook, you want me to cook? Like, or you want to say yeah, something? Yeah, I mean, I guess <laughs> but before that, I mean, uh-huh. when when you say guess how much we deal with them, I, mean, I would assume we deal with it a lot because mm-hmm. you know the the age old thing with the Holy Land, mm-hmm. um, and how much the whole world is tapped into mm-hmm. these specific sides that go into the Holy Land. You know, you know the Jews and the Muslims. Mm-hmm. You know everything that goes into that. I would expect we would deal with it a lot, mm-hmm. um, just in that aspect. Because I think like it's one of the, like those two sides specifically, the Holy Land. Like that's the religious connection I think for the whole world. Right. And there's been so many fights for the Holy Land, mm-hmm. um, that I just think the whole world is tapped in and should be. But before you get going, mm-hmm. I think it's my top take because I know Matt's about to sweep the floor with this. <laughs> um, my top take is I I lo- I find it funny just how much the media is actually controlled. Because, um, you know, I'm not going to sit here and I'm not going to take a side in the war because this war has nothing to do with me. I'm not, you know, religious. I'm right. not. Right. My side is literally that I think there should be no war mm-hmm. because I, I believe in peace. Right. Um, I just think, you know, because we're in America, because America supports Israel, mm-hmm. I just find it funny how bad they make, how they make Palestine look when, you know, in reality, there's a little stat that I have because I used to date someone that is actually Palestine, like they have Palestine, Palestine you know, roots. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I've been, I, you know, I've been, I chopped it up with her a little bit. She sent me a whole bunch of links about that side of the war. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting that more Palestinians have been massacred over the last 12 days mm-hmm. than the total number of Israelis um, killed over the last 30 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, when they say, oh my God, you know, pray for Israel and everything, I'd say pray for both sides. Because... I say pray for every innocent involved. Yeah. yeah. That's really Absolutely. what it comes down to. I mean, and I think the people that are even fighting the war, most of pray them are innocent. For, yeah, we, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. That's so, why I said every innocent person, yeah. every innocent mm-hmm. body that's right. involved. Yeah. Yeah. Cook. It's Cook. disgusting. Cook. It's, it's, it's very disgusting. So, to me, to me for this, for this war, it's just like, it brings it back to that. The reason why I said, "Oh, it's not Gaza; it's Hamas and everything." Hamas attacked Israel in a terrorist attack, and then they ran back to Gaza, and Gaza is controlled by Palestine. So that's where the initial narrative of Israel versus Palestine drew from. Mm-hmm. Palestinians had nothing to do with that, unless a certain Palestinian happened to be in Hamas. That's really all it came down to. But Hamas then went hid in Gaza. And now, yeah, like you said, the Palestinian population over the last 12 days has gotten freaking obliterated because Israel is like, all right, you're just going to you're going to attack yeah. us. We're going to smoke you. And they gave they gave the Gazan um, uh, population. They're like, yo, 24 hours. We're coming. So, like, please get the hell out of there because yeah, we're, we're after Hamas. Yeah, we're but respectfully, I get that. Yeah, you gave them a warning. But respectfully, 
people are, don't want to leave their homes. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah like, like, but, why, like, what's why? the plan about to be? Yeah, like, just... where? first off, where am I going to go? Yeah, if like, if, like, people just told us, like, get out of America, we're going to be like, well. What do you want me to do, buddy? <laughs> like, so, like, and, <laughs> and, and they're like, well, you're harboring Hamas, and, we're like, and they're like, well, like. Are we? Like, because, like, maybe somebody is, but we are. We? are. Like, so, yeah. so it left, it left the population in a tough situation to deal with. Because, like, Egypt was bringing in some people, but then they cut it off. Some yeah. countries are bringing in some people, but then they cut it off. So it left all that population fucked. And so then, yeah, like, I saw a lot of the bombing videos. Straight up towers were getting yeah. taken down. It's yeah. just, like, it's very, very sad. And so that's fucked. But then... That's where Iran got involved, and then that's where we got involved. And now this is this is why it's becoming an actual thing. If it was just them two duking it out, doing their fucking thing, all right. But Iran sent Hezbollah to back up right. Hamas. Hezbollah is a whole nother terrorist organization. Yeah. So now Iran, the country that has the most terrorist organization routes, or um... Can't think of the word. Um, origins. <laughs> <laughs> like it's it 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 makes so many terror or that country has so many terrorist organizations coming out of it, and you'd literally just send one to go back up another, and it just is a bad look. So then we're like, yeah, let's go send aircraft carriers to back up Israel. But in a different in a di- on a different side of it, just to be honest with you, like you know that there aren't um, when you speak about Muslims yes. and Israelis or yeah. Jews, right? In this specific conversation there are way more different factions of islamic factions than there are jewish factions oh so that's why there will be splintered you know what i mean organizations that do lead back to terrorists or because most of it like we already know is is primarily based on religion yeah yeah they start off as religion based and then they become extremists exactly you understand what i'm saying so in a lot of those cases it's crazy because their ties do tie back to shit like that. Yeah, there is only going to tie back to America. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We looked at it as the biggest gangsters in the fucking world. Yeah, but when which is the homework on which is know. an issue sometimes. And yeah, I'm not, yeah, like, man, I'm not gonna, I mean? so that's why I had to just say that. No, of part course, real quick yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. It's, it's crazy, man. There's a reason to, for such. Hell yes. Yeah, because at the end of the day, even though you know that yeah. it's going like that, the remember the 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 meat and potatoes of that shit. So. Whenever we report on it, it is always going to be ugly. You yes. understand what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. And honestly... For people to be scared. It's absolutely. propaganda. It's all about yeah. it. You understand what I'm saying? But they're backing them up because that's their brothers. And with you know us I'm being, with us being, the, yeah. with us being the biggest gangsters out mm-hmm. there, sadly, bro, like, we're, we're the ones who always have a... We always have a start to a terrorist organization, I feel mm-hmm. like. With, uh, mm-hmm. with Al-Qaeda mm-hmm. and, like, all the shit going on over there... Us in Russia after like the Cold War or before the Cold War and everything, mm-hmm. we're the ones who like sent a bunch of like weapons and shit to the Middle East mm-hmm. to help during the World War mm-hmm. against Germany and everything. And then we left them hanging and Russia left them hanging and it left them out there. They had a bunch of weapons, but yeah. they have no manpower. Right. So that's why the original, one of the original like big terrorist yeah. organizations had started because yeah. we gave them a bunch yeah. of weapons and then left yeah. them hanging. Mm-hmm. And so they took it some type of way. Yeah. And again, when we took all of our troops out of the Middle East this last time, we left 3,900 AR-15 tactical rifles over mm-hmm. there. And those are the ones that were used in the assault in Israel. Mm-hmm. So it's just like it always ties back to us, sadly, mm-hmm. which is fucked. But the, I, I, in my vow, I mean, no, like, good, I, good, I feel good. like when we when we talk it's about America, be a conversation. Yeah. I think that it sucks that you know right now I, I'm not taking a political side because, mm-hmm. in my opinion, I don't like Democrats or Republicans. Oh, I don't. Um, I think politics is. I feel like there should be a middle. I feel like we gotta, you know, at some point we gotta end that that shit because I think it's too extreme, Mm -hmm. too Mm -hmm. much change, too Mm -hmm. much whatever. The Joe Biden administration kind of scares me because, you know, they're moving as a collective, like a big, gigantic, you know, I I mean, as they should, I guess, a a Democratic team. Mm -hmm. Um, But it just scares me that just Joe Biden, the face of it, the leader of it, is just out there, just this old ass man who can barely finish his sentences. So many times he's shown us that he's this feeble ass old man that really has no true idea what's going on. He has to rehearse so much, um, 
you know, when, when he doesn't, it's obvious. Because mm-hmm. you see him out there, like, running off of his thoughts. Um, his sentences aren't fucking finishing. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it's scary because, I mean, even Kim Jong-un has come out and said, you know, if Joe Biden re-wins the election, like, us as a nation, we're going to have to, like, reconsider things. Like, yeah. We're going to have to re-evaluate things. And we know they're tapped in with China and Russia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That seems to be the big they triangle They already have an arms forming. trade with Russia. Right. That, that seems to be the big triangle forming. So no, 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 no. That's wait, a big wait, square. I, the I triangle's already you, formed. I want to yeah. ask you a specific question. It's Iran question. Though. Yeah, go ahead. Quick, what are you, what are they saying that looks like, no, what do they mean? What are they saying about Joe it, it, Biden. It's like, it's ba- like, cause he's not out there saying, you know, fuck Joe Biden and shitting on him. Like, he's just basically saying like, mm-hmm. if he's reelected as yeah. the leader of the United States of America, one of the biggest gangsters in the yes. world, blah, 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 blah uh-huh. um, that they're going to have to reevaluate their partnership, uh-huh. their, whatever partnership's actually there, but yeah. their, there is none. their actual yeah. relationship, like no. they're going to have to reevaluate where they no. stand. Uh-huh. And if that's what they're saying, with that right, that's what well, I see, that's why I think it is. I think so, what he's <laughs> saying is, you need to not reevaluate the relationship with North Korea because there isn't one. We have a mm-hmm. relationship but with South where Korea. It's exactly. I think what he's saying is you need to reevaluate your position in the world because right. that makes us so much. It makes us look so much weaker having yeah. Joe Biden as our. And like leader. I said, I'm, I'm not sitting here yeah. saying like I want a Trump back or anything. I just want a good, strong leader again. Yeah, hundred percent. Like, but uh, given his last address to the nation, where he was talking about how we're not gonna. Let Russia, because Russia's been threatening us a lot. China's yeah. been threatening us a lot. Yeah. And also us, Russia and China, have been threatening the Middle East to chill out. Because yeah. if they do fully pop off, Everyone's we gonna all have, have to, have to get involved. Yeah. And it's really just going to be bad from there on out. So I do give all three of the powers a little little head mm-hmm. or a hat tilt for that. Just because it's just like, all right, we know it's going to get bad. So we're trying to prevent it a little bit. But also it's just like... We're sending jets over, like, our... Like, in, uh, we, this would be some shit that I'd get tight at. Like, yo, yeah. you're deadass sending that... You're... Yeah. Okay, what the fuck? Yeah, like, we, we mean, had... Let's, let's shake, you know we, what I mean? We had, um... We had one of... We had two aircraft carriers in the Mediterranean. We left one to back up Israel. We sent one to Japan. The ones in Japan went and was flying around Russia's border, <laughs> testing Russia just mm-hmm. to see what their defense would be like. So literally the border's right here, our uh, aircraft, and then their aircraft are just flying simultaneously, checking each other pretty much. And it's just yeah. like, and then like Canada had an aircraft out over the uh, Pacific. China sent an aircraft out over the Pacific and they were watching each other there next to each other. So everyone's real tense and everything, but it's just like, it really falls down to what are they doing in the Middle East? Are because Israel said they'd rather not fight, but everything Israel's done has bro, been the opposite. They've been wiping the. They've it's been, been the opposite, oh and then God. I and then violent, also uh, like NATO, Ukraine's trying to join NATO, which means we would have to then join in because they're right. a nation getting attacked by Russia mm-hmm. in NATO, and so then all of our bro, team that's partners. All for Ukraine still be you know because I thought Russia was gonna no no offense to any Ukraine molly them. Like, that's... Because that's why everyone was so scared for that war, because right. Russia, Ukraine, damn, Russia should, like, beat the shit out of them. Yo, they've held their ground this far, and... They, it's, been a year, some, it's been a year and a half. At some points, right. they had an upper hand. Like, it's mm-hmm. it's been fucking... Because they didn't plan. It was strategy. They didn't have enough... Yeah. Get, like, it was something very they thought, simple. Yeah. Who they would thought have, it was going to be something yeah, easy? Something very, sweet. Something it was something very simple. It's like gas, yeah. too. You see, that's why all those tanks yeah. and shit was over there. They, they Absolutely. ran out of gas and shit out there. Absolutely. And to me, it's just like... Yeah. The whenever yeah. a war, the only reason people aren't even calling this World War Three yet is just because we the powers haven't fully gotten involved yet. Even though we are, we have uh, soldiers out there, mm-hmm. we have um, supplies out there, we have aircrafts out there, we have carriers out there. Russia, they're sending guns to certain like Iran and Hezbollah and everything. China is at a like technological warfare against Europe and shit, it's already popping off. And that's how all the world wars start. Mm-hmm. It's just because we haven't fully said we're in war yet that it isn't World War Three. But this is World War Three as we know it. Yeah. It's like, it's happening. We just ain't there yet. We just haven't been because announced Because I think all war. the major powers, we're all trying to be like the, you know, we're all trying to be stand-up, professional, trying not to really fight each other. But like you could tell, it's a sneeze away from... Yeah, 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 yeah. Sneeze, a sneeze away like, from going... Like one accident can happen, like like you said, like the two planes flying next to each other. One of those, like one the of them gets in testy the plane, and shoots. Right. That's what it's, I'm saying. There, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all over. Yeah. And it's just like 
certain nations that are in NATO with us and like are supposed to have that treaty and everything, yeah. they're breaking off, joining Russia. Yeah. Some that aren't in NATO and that were with like Iran and everything are breaking off and joining us. We're starting to see that allies and axis yeah. countries are dividing and taking their sides because they know it's about to pop off. So like, all right, we want to be on this side when it pops off, or we want to be on that side when it pops yeah, off. So absolutely. shit's the yo Loki. The only country I see. Or only continent that I see that isn't getting involved is South America. Shout out y'all. Y'all just be down there cooling. And it's just partying. Y'all and just be <laughs> like, down yeah. there respectfully. Y'all just be doing your thing. Um, Let's but move every there. <laughs> every other continent out here is just ready to just blow the fuck up, bro. Every other every other place out there is ready to go. Yeah, man. So um, to move on to a lighter subject. Halloween, because this is going to release on Halloween, so let's get spooky. Um, wah ha ha ha. Um, Halloween's dead, shot. though. That was shot. Because, you want to know why? Because Halloween is shot. Yeah. <laughs> Good right. segue, Matt. Right. Um, <laughs> Halloween is dead, man. I, I just want to say I miss the way Halloween was. Now it's just like for the... It, it's basically just an excuse for adults to party yeah. rather than it is a holiday for kids to go out yeah. right. and some there's, good costumes and get candy curfews, and all that. Yeah. A lot of houses don't celebrate. A lot of houses don't decorate. And a lot of people out there being dickheads. I miss yeah. the decorations, bro. Yeah. yeah. And the, mm-hmm. the, the hype that came with the haunted houses... Um, obviously, there's some cool haunted houses in the world yeah. still. Uh-huh. But you remember, bro? Absolutely. Like Probably back, like, I, I, want totally you, I want you to give some insight on how it was for you growing up. Because it was probably even better than it was for us growing up. Because yeah. for us, yeah, we remember the decorations, going out in costumes mm-hmm. and shit. But I, I know Yah went above and beyond. So, especially, you told me to bring up Mystery Night. Oh, wow, that's dope. Yeah. yeah. So, first, yeah. So, Mystery Night is actually before Halloween. So, yeah. Mystery Night or Mischief Night. Dopest fucking holiday in the world for inner city people. I'm from North New Jersey or Exus County, New Jersey, right? Yeah. So that includes East Orange, Orange, Newark, West Orange, and South Orange, right? You also have Irvington in there, all right? Um, Elizabeth is a couple, but anyway, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Every year, the day before Halloween, everybody knows, every store knows, every supermarket knows <laughs> that there's going to be looting by young kids running in to steal eggs. And shit like that that they to, to, to throw yeah, at yeah, yeah, houses yeah, yeah. and shit like that. So mystery night is a night that you go with your friends, you get a bunch of eggs, and you do a bunch of fucking mischief. So <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. it was it was amazing. We used to load up, get dozens and dozens of eggs. The best one that I remember was standing at the bus stop. Well, farmers waiting, hated mystery listen, night and waiting for the <laughs> bus because it's the city. So yeah. um, it's like buses running every seven minutes and five right, minutes right, and right, shit right, like yeah, that. Yeah. We standing at the fucking bus stop with eggs in our pocket, but oh. they don't know. You know what I mean? Opening yeah. up the bus, people coming off the bus and the bus driver. Off the bus, yo, imagine getting, getting off the bus and just do. Just getting, <laughs> and that happened. You know what I mean? Yeah. Every year, the same time. Terrible every year. people. So <laughs> it, it was a, it was amazing. It was the Damn. fun. Oh, I bet that would be. So, that sounds like fun because now you just mm-hmm. got people just raising hell on Halloween. Yes, and they're just chasing you. Like yeah. they just know it's just it's just fun. It's just people just being chased and doing shit all damn night, and it happens soon as it goes. It gets dark. I imagine paintballing was probably everything. Yeah, everything yeah. Was yeah. I, I remember you know doing what I mean? stuff like, like that on Halloween. on Halloween right? later in the night. Once yeah. like some like. The little kids were at home, and yeah. it's just like teenagers and adults out. Going oh, yeah. to war. It yeah, was like all crazy. crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no but tissue only. Nah, looting potato. is tough, though. Yeah, no, the hell, whole yeah. town knew. Yeah, bro, I, thought, no, I, thought, I thought Kevin was just like, yeah, they just ransacked the stores. Of no, oh, yeah, when he like, said looting, I was yeah, like, like, oh, it's the purge out here. But the whole neighborhood, and shit, yeah, yeah, they toilet paper. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They vegetables. probably just left it out front for y'all. Yeah, toilet paper, <laughs> vegetables, eggs, all that type of shit. Like, man, vegetarians had a tough time the next day. Yeah, <laughs> <just tough>. <laughs> <Yo>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> whoever got their food stamps on November first and they were vegetarian. That's yeah. rough. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it was the hood. You know what I'm saying? Without a question. Damn, Damian Respect Lillard dropped six <laughs> points tonight. It was the hood. And they lost to the Hawks bad. Oh, man. Warriors are whooping the Rockets, though. Um, mm-hmm. But... As they should. Rockets about to be 0-3. Mm-hmm. As tough. they should. Fuck you. <laughs> well, we'll talk about that on a later episode. <laughs> um, but what about... What was some of your guys' favorite Halloween costumes growing up? 
Like the ones that you wore. Me, you know, Matt's I'm a, already I'm gonna, give, I'm gonna give some good and bad ones that I've had. Yeah. But. Uh-huh. So I, I think like my good one, my actual favorite, I was Anakin one year. I got mad creative, grabbed some curtains to look like the Jedi robe. Ooh. You know, I had a lightsaber. You know, I put the little scar on my eye. My hair was grown out, so I slicked it back. Um, wish I had some photos from that night. Uh-huh. Um, that, but the other one, the one that I'm not so proud of is I was Rey Mysterio one year. Now this is crazy. Um, I would deflate a beach ball <laughs> and I would cut the Rey Mysterio mask out of the beach ball and put it over my head and I was an absolute shit show. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, a beach ball is just not, bro. <laughs> how did you get it on? Oh, just it, it fit yeah. over. It fit over, yeah. Bro, but how much of it was just like yeah, flopping around and it excess? Was, it was bad, bro. I don't, I don't. Did you design it to look like one of his masks? Or yes, did you just bro. Cut out no, the eyes? I just cut out the eyes and the mouth. And oh, but so you didn't design it? Yeah, no, like, like I cut a, cut a hole at the bottom, cut a hole where I could breathe. Yeah. You know, okay, but no, shit. like paint or nothing. No, on no, right? Okay, no. Right. Maybe I got maybe I got crazy maybe I got a little crafty and put a marker on. Okay, okay, okay. But um, <laughs> oh yeah, and then I was Aang one year, um, because I like Did you when shave I, your head bald. No, I shaved it to like not like where it was fully bald, but like it was like as short as I can go. It was like a, a one or two. Because like what the fuck, I'd be I'd get roasted if I was had a bald head. But I tried to do the arrow on top of the head. It just wasn't. It was bad, bro. I had some Great. pretty shot Halloweens. <laughs> Nah, that's terrible. Yeah. Um. So I mean, I got a couple like all right ones, but I say one, the one that I always remember that was dog shit. So <laughs> I was super young too. I was like maybe four. Mm-hmm. I couldn't have been any older than four. But I remember that my mom was going to a Halloween party. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what my brother was dressed up as because it was like you could bring your kids to the party mm-hmm. type of shit. And I mean, the adults are still getting lit, but um. I don't remember where my brother was, but I, my mom definitely put me in a skunk costume. <laughs> and this shit, you, you be quiet over there. You be quiet over there. Yo, man, the skunk, yo, that's crazy. Bro, what? I remember being so tight and eventually just like, I, I know I, I know I cried like a bitch because I had to go outside like that. <laughs> I know I did. It, it was, was the most costume? embarrassing costume. Yo, are there photos from that night? I hope not. <laughs> I'm gonna have to ask mom. I'm about to ask your mom. Um, But one of my favorite ones, and this one, it really wasn't even like a a character. Mm -hmm. But um, so I remember the year before, I had like a a Jason machete that, like, if you tipped it upside down, blood came out the handle onto the uh, on the inside of the plastic of the machete. So I had that. And but then I didn't want to be Jason again because like and like yeah, it was, I feel it was, like everyone and it was bullshit. Like, I was Jason. Jason a couple we times. bought a white hockey hockey mask and then I cut the part exactly. and I drew it. Uh-huh. It was the easiest costume. Yeah, it was yeah, always yeah. available. Yeah. Out of, out of so all I, the most available costumes, I think Jason. Yeah, was and the then one. I just wore a big coat yeah. and a, like a little outfit. But it was, I didn't want to be that again. And so my mom had worked for the Center of Disability, mm-hmm. and so they sometimes had, like, scrubs there, uh-huh. so I had asked her if she could get me some scrubs, so she stole them, bitches, uh-huh. <laughs> and, no, once you wear them, you have to throw them out, so uh-huh. she just took some, said she wore them, and just brought mm-hmm. them home, and so, do you remember them, you, I know you probably wouldn't know this, you know the movie Dr. Giggles? Of course. Alright, so I kind of did a little rendition of him. Mm-hmm. I put on the scrubs, yeah. I had the little face mask, but then I had this machete that leaked blood. Uh-huh. And so that was one of my more creative and fun ones that I did. Oh my and it was God. one of the ones that I remember. Guy. You're a horror guy for real. Oh, yeah, Dr. Giggles. Nobody knows about Dr. Giggles, bro. It's <laughs> gonna, gonna be good for what we have next. <laughs> um, yeah, go ahead. What was your. So, so my worst, and probably, you know, yeah. is gonna be a hobo, man. So I didn't have, like, again, I ain't had no paper, man. We ain't had respectfully, paper, respectfully. Man. respectfully. Thank you, man. Respectfully. It was, it was come from humble beginnings, man. Respectfully. Humble beginnings. Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't I mean, yeah, humble beginnings. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah, I was man. walking around with a beach ball on my fucking yeah, head. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, so, 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 my, mom's, <laughs> my mom stole scrubs, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was crazy though the, the shit that was so weird about it. No, no like, one stopped me from putting a beach ball in my head. My bad. So Go ahead. Weird, my, my <laughs> That's mask, crazy. Drew black shit over my mouth and like on my <laughs> eyes and made it look like tried to make me look like a bum bum. So it was, <laughs> it was okay. You know what I mean? That was crazy. I was, that's what I remember. But, yeah. You know, I had on some big ass shoes. <laughs> you know, that like didn't fit like yeah, that oversized totally, shit totally didn't fit like you know what I mean I'm like no I don't want nah. to <laughs> what about the best so the best one would be it 
Oh, oh Pennywise? Oh, okay. Yeah, Pennywise yeah. with the big ass head. Were you told, were you a uh, Scarface at any point? No. Oh, uh, well, like face in real life. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah. Were you? Were you? Because that takes us back to episode one. Yeah. Uh, high off life. Yeah. Were you old Pennywise or newer Pennywise? No, old. When Pennywise. was this? This was yeah, back was then. Old, All right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Where, like the, the mask was actually plastic and shit like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Yes, but sir. that was the cool. shit, though. That's fire. Yeah. All right. So with that being said, we are going to get into a horror characters draft, um, but. Yeah, Halloween's got to come back, though. I mean, sorry, I have a real grave with Halloween being asked. Talk your shit, talk your shit. Because, like, Halloween is one of my favorite Mm -hmm. holidays, not because, like, you know, I'm still out there trick-or-treating or or I have, like... It's just the spirit of Halloween. I love the whole dressing up part, Uh you get candy, like, just spooky, you Mm -hmm. know, innocent spooky shit. Um, So, please, like, I I feel like humanity needs to just bring Halloween, like, back, back. Yeah. Like, like I said, it's like an excuse for adults to party now. People just... Either dress up in like some slutty outfits or Bro, the clubs were popping tonight. I saw like, or and yeah, yesterday. Yeah. Nah, the pictures I seen oh, just from should. Toga, I was like, oh fuck. Okay, we, we maybe right. should have popped out. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah. Now nah, we're gonna pop out next year. Don't you worry. <laughs> um, but let's do a horror characters draft. Okay, right. so like horror villains. Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. So basically, how you guys always know is we always do a draft. <laughs> um, okay. So I My boy became a man today. I finally won the number one pick <laughs> in the draft. Um, me and, and Deja were finally locked in. I guessed the number. Hers was no. two. Mine was one. Oh, so you didn't get it's, it. I think it's as close we're gonna as we're gonna get. <laughs> Matt's going second. Kem's going third. Um, so with that being said, you you know the rules. Snake draft. Pick whoever from horror franchises. Mm-hmm. No double we'll, enough, we'll obviously. Shit, we'll, shit, we'll shit on each other if the pick's not a horror pick. Mm-hmm. You know how it goes. So, or if it's just a bad horror pick. Mm-hmm. I'm going to open this with my favorite horror character. I I love... Basically because we put in so many hours into the game as well. Oh, fuck. That, yeah. that, that, that pushed it over everybody else for me. It's always video games. I'm going with Jason. Okay. Jason I love Jason. Gordon. I love the story. You know, his mom, and, you know, this just brutally just killing motherfuckers. No you remind way me out. more of his mom than him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we can, but I'm going with Jason. <laughs> Jason's the face of the Jason's the face of all that. Okay. So Jason is my number one pick. Go ahead, man. All right. I'm picking to me the most iconic horror character of all time is just Michael Myers. I feel like okay. he you look like you could be Michael Myers. I don't think so. Um, I think <laughs> not not nearly in shape enough. <laughs> that motherfucker you're still, was a you're tank. A, you're a tank. I, I, I'm more, I feel like I'm more Jason than Michael. That man was right. different. Watch um, out, guys. Yeah, I think, I think okay. Michael is just, you know, most iconic horror character of all, all right. time. My favorite right. horror movies of all time. Okay. Even the duds. All right. Who you got? All right, so... You got two I'm, right here. Yeah, I get to get two. So, with the first one, I am going to go with Pinhead. Mm. No okay, okay. All right, and the second one, I'm going to go with Freddy. Ah, two, fuck. Two motherfuckers yeah, that attack you in your dreams and shit like all that. All right, man. all right. That's know? fire, that's fire. So, you know, you got to play the go game. Go for it, man. You know, but luckily, it. you didn't take this guy. Mm-hmm. It was the one where I was like, yo, you could be a sneaky guy for Let's this. See. Mm-hmm. The creeper from Jeepers Creepers. All right, fine. Oh, yeah. That dude is menacing. That dude is a demon. Good call. And just the first two movies. The mm-hmm. rest of them bitches, fuck mm-hmm. that. Yep. <laughs> All right, so I got two in a row here, which is great. So, you brought him up already. Mm-hmm. I'm going with Pennywise. I feel like I can't leave him. Mm. You know, I can't leave him to go too far here. I'd, Hell no. I'd be a fool if I had two picks in a row and didn't pick him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... And this is tough. Which one I want to leave behind here? Because I got two for this pick. Because I knew it would fall to me. Um, you know what? I gotta go with the popular franchise. I'm going with Jigsaw, not the dude on the bike, the old man, the savage, the guy that invented the whole thing. Mm-hmm. I'm going with Jigsaw. All right. Got to go. Bro, he's the face of a franchise. Guy who hasn't actually killed anybody with his hands. Cool. Whatever, bro. But he killed a lot of people with his contraptions. All right. Cool. (laughs) Cool. My turn now? Yeah. My turn? Um, I'm picking Leatherface. Fuck. Yeah. Like, another tank. God damn it. And he's just like... Got a fucking chainsaw, I and they that. just made a new game out of him, bro. That's basic. It that's it's basically is it Friday the Thirteenth. Yes, we playing it. We could. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, Leatherface, and they have a new thing out with him, and he just ripped up everyone on that bus. Okay. He, he he put up his death totals mm-hmm. a ridiculous amount, because right now the death tolls, it's like in horror uh, uh, franchises, Michael Myers 1, Jason's 2. Mm-hmm. Nah, fucking Leatherface jumped his ass up into that top 10, because okay. usually he's only facing like three people in a movie. But this movie, or this last one he did, okay. he put he put out like 40 people okay. in that movie alone. All right, Cam, you got two in a row. Damn. And that was the one. Yeah, man. Fuck. It's a tough choice. It's a tough choice for me. So I'm going to go with Candyman. Mm. Oh. That's my okay. next one. Okay. Candyman, Candyman. Candy Candy Man. Man. Thought it was going to fall. Thought it was mm-hmm. going to fall. And... Pumpkinhead. Oh, okay. fuck. All right. Trick or treat? Oh, fuck. I didn't even have him on my list. That's a great pick. All right. Holy All right, shit. Oh, this game's um, intense. Okay. Sweating. Shit, 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 shit. Oh, fuck. Who do I want? I'm going Chucky. Okay, yeah. yeah. I, I thought that was Chucky. I thought that was just about to fall in my lap. No, I'll, say, I I'll take go. it late. I, I was going to go I'll fifth, say, but I'm like, nah, I can't let that fall another round. <laughs> all right, all right, cool, cool. So I got two. So these are my last two here. Yep. Um. So we're going with characters. They don't necessarily have to be in a movie specifically. What do you mean? It's because they're, they're Halloween I, characters. Yeah, movie. so I mean, I feel, I feel like this is a horror character. Yeah. Okay. I'm going with Slenderman. Yeah. Slenderman. That counts. Okay. Yeah, all right. I'm going yeah, Slenderman. Yeah, that that mother... If there was one thing that did mm-hmm. have me a little geeked as a kid, because it wasn't... Mm-hmm. Like, I wasn't scared by everything. Mm-hmm. For whatever reason, Slenderman did it. I, really? He I did would it always look down alleyways, make sure he wasn't there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm going Slenderman. And I don't know if this counts either, but it's a classic. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people back in the day were scared. I'm going Frankenstein. Okay. Frankenstein's monster? Yep. Okay, because Frankenstein was a scientist. Oh, yeah, well, my bad. The monster. Yeah, yeah. The green guy. The fucked up looking <laughs> God, I mean, like, that. that's like a staple. Like, that. it's, yeah, it's yeah, one yeah, of yeah. the staples. And that's why... Oh, I got so many on this list Ooh. that I could choose. But yeah, from. I'm fine. I, I know, fucking love my list. Choose. I feel like if I'm just keep, keeping with the staples that I already have, because I already have Michael... Mm-hmm. The Jeepers Creepers, Leatherface, and Chucky. Yep. I mean, I could, I should just go Ghostface here for Scream, just to keep the staples. But I mean, if I want to go an out there pick, pick go with Han- Hannibal Lecter. Okay, Hannibal. A little Silence of the Lambs, buddy. Mm-hmm. My boy Hayden is wild. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cam, you got the last pick. Hey, I'm trying to think, man. I got a couple, man. So Go with the tone, nobody man. used Scream, like you said, but he's not that scary to me. And it's always it's a different it's a different person every you know movie, I mean? so um, it doesn't stay consistent. So I'm gonna go with the fucking um, ghost monster, whatever it is from Sinister. Okay. Oh, uh, all right. Whatever, Bubba ba- Duke. Bagula, Bagul, yeah, Bagul, yeah. Bubba Duke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How you thinking? yeah Bagul, Bagul. Bagul. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a great one. That's a great pick. I left him out just because I was scared of how to pronounce the name. <laughs> Yo, quick honorable oh, mentions because they were at the end of my list. Dracula was going to be it if yeah, one of you guys. Count chose... Dracula was, I was, it was yeah. between him and Hannibal. Yeah, if you guys chose Frankenstein, I would have chosen I was Dracula. Go traditional. I was trying to find people that would like scare yeah. me. Later. Yeah. Well, yeah, I had like I'm trying to win one of the. I had drafts. the orphan. <laughs> I had I Carrie. Was everyone. I had Mama from the Mama movie. Yeah. I had so many. Pain's, Lab- <laughs> Pain's Labyrinth, the pale man dude with the yeah. eyes on the hands. I had the blind man from Don't Breathe. Oh fuck! That was gonna be one of my oh, fallback options. Shit. That motherfucker was yeah. That dude works at my job. Nah, <laughs> yeah, I a, think he works at everybody. There's an old head at my job that looks exactly like him, Johnny O. That's Johnny O. I think there is like he I, looks exactly yeah. like the old man, the blind man. Bro, at my job, there's a guy that visits that looks like fucking the, the guy. I had but, Norman Bates and Annie Wilkes. I wanted them, but I was like, ah. So Able to Lincoln. to recap everyone's list, let's go. I got Jason. Pennywise, Jigsaw, Slenderman, and Frankenstein. I love my list. Matt got Michael Myers, the Jeepers Creepers Creeper. Creeper, 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 Creeper. <laughs> like um, Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw. Um, Chucky and Hannibal Lecter, which I, is a I fucking fire-ass list. list. That list is and crazy. And Kem just has, like, he has this, like, very nice vibe to his list, as usual. Pinhead, Freddy Krueger, Candyman, Pumpkinhead, and the villain, Bagul. Sinister. Yeah. 
I so, mean, bro, his his list. That's what I'm saying. That's like a nice like. Who had Pennywise? You had Pennywise, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's yes. Right. Second. No, honestly, I love all these lists. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yo, yes. you let us know who wins. Yes. We'll actually put a community a poll up in the community tab. Let us know who won the Halloween draft. Yeah, that was fire. There so, are the horror drafts. One that was good. One character that I wish I could have drafted uh-huh. is Darth Vader, and I get it. There's nothing like nothing that says he's a horror. But I think character. Star Wars needs to jump on it and make a horror film jump for Darth it. Vader. That is just. Like, you've already entered that realm when you had Anakin Skywalker in human, or not human form, because he's always human, in his Jedi, you know, before he fully, fully turned into Darth Vader, um, you know, killing kids. So I feel like you already done that in one of the staple movies of the franchise. You could do a little spinoff where Darth Vader is just hunting down and just killing mad people and just an absolute fucking villain. Someone stops him, you know, not by killing him, by but you know, just figuring out a way to just stop him from killing mm-hmm. as much as he is in that current moment. But I would love it. I, I it, it would be spooky. It, it would be nice. Oh yeah, if you, if you get if here. you get Rogue One, Darth Vader, and just put a movie about him in that era of him. Nah, he's gonna snap. Yeah, yeah. he's gonna like yeah. he's gonna go crazy. But um, three honorable mentions for me. I got Death from Final Death Destination. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it, it was one that I was like, ah, I could be obscure, you know. Yeah. Yeah, Matt really had a list of 20. Matt was yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I got the doll faces from The Strangers. A lot of people don't know that mm-hmm. movie, but yeah. No, listen. The Strangers? Come on, Matt. We vibe too fucking much. All right, my guy. I, that's why I knew one. you would. Yes. The first I, I didn't more than watch anything, the second one. bro, is fucking phenomenal. Yeah, bro, it was... It, yeah, yeah, yeah. There like isn't many movies... Honest scare. Like I said, my mom had horror movies in the house all the time yes. and so I grew up watching horror movies there's only been two movies ever in my life that actually creeped me out mm-hmm. and fucked me up for a short period of time mm-hmm. the original It and then The Strangers yes. and so That's yeah so I love those <laughs> and then uh, Samara Fire. Morgan from uh, the, uh, the Ring okay. the, the chick crawling out the well mm-hmm. yeah fuck that bitch okay. alright okay. <laughs> so um, you know quick to talk about you know pull us back in a little bit life um, you know, rest in peace to my mom. I haven't really gotten uh, a rest chance in peace. Sorry, Pete. to really talk about it, you know, on the podcast. Um, but yeah, man, she she passed away a little over a week ago. Um, really doesn't even feel like a week. Like this is another like I don't mean to compare it to a baby being born, but obviously, you know, we're talking about birth and death, mm-hmm. so it does have some kind of tie in. Mm-hmm. Like two, like I I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying like. You know, my problems are more than anybody else's or anything, but that is two very overwhelming things to happen yes, in, in a, a span of a week, bro. So I've been really kind of going through it. That's why, you know, podcast has been a little slow um, because we've just been, you know, just taking just a little step back before we, we you know, go storm through brick walls again. Um, but it was it was pretty it was pretty sad because I necessarily wasn't on the best terms um, with my mom when she went. Um, reason being is that she's been sick on and off, but this time when she was sick, she kind of was kind of tired of being ill. She was kind of tired of really... She gave up on it. She So she kind of just didn't really want to keep going through mm-hmm. all the pain she was going through. So for the last, you know, two years, it was a very lengthy um, end. And then for the end of it, I was kind of just really selfishly mad um, because I didn't want my mom to go mm-hmm. yet. Because I still feel like I have a lot more to accomplish in this life. I still feel like I have a lot more to do. And she was just kind of seeing the beginning of that. Um, and, you know, it was just hard to see, you know, her just be like, you know, I'm kind of tired of going through all this pain. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, like, literally, um, when I did get up there, um, she had already, you know lost her ability to really speak and react. So, um, yeah, that's kind of how it was. She was just breathing for three days. Mm-hmm. And I was just sitting there. We were all kind of just waiting for it to happen. It was like you were waiting for it to happen, but you didn't want it to happen. Mm-hmm. So it's two very conflicting feelings yeah, at the same time. suffering to be over. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's just something I have to live with for the rest of my life. Um, something that is kind of, it was a real thing, you know, just not getting that closure conversation with her. Um, but that's life, you know, mm-hmm. like, Life just, like, mm-hmm. it just, shit just happens when it happens. Um, and while I say no closure, I think I did get a couple points of closure, too. Um, because, 
you know, when I was there and for the first day of the last three days of her living, Mm -hmm. um, she was still aware, like she was moving her eyes, like she was there, but like she couldn't talk back. Mm -hmm. She could make noises, but she couldn't talk. Um, the closure in it is that she knows that I'm okay. Like I did come, you know, I had a couple lengthy conversations with her. Um, where I mean, obviously she wasn't talking back, but you know how that she goes. She knows you were there. She yeah. knows you. She knows I'm okay. Yeah. She knows that at the end of the day, I still, you know, loved her very deeply, thanked her for everything. Um, cause you know, me and her, we were pretty fucking close growing up cause my dad was strict. Um, so it was really hard to be close with my dad cause he was so strict. Um, whereas my mom was like the, you know, the tender, Mm-hmm. You know, one that was, okay, kind of come into my arms if, you know, you're in trouble or if, right, if yeah, dad's, yeah. you know, being too mean. Um, and so it was just that, you know, I feel like my closure in it is knowing that I do love my mom. Like, I'm not saying, like, at any point that I didn't, but, like, it was a good reminder that I actually do fully love my mom, thank her for everything, remember all the good times because there was good times. It was just a really sad, sad um, last two or three years to her life that I feel like she didn't deserve, but also, you know, I feel like, you know, I lack for words here. Like, I feel like I could have been better. So that's just something that I have to live with. Everyone always feels um, like that when somebody passes on. Yeah. Everyone, and, everyone always feels like they can do it. And that. it was just so real because it was my mom, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, like that was like if for the people that don't know, like I'm adopted. So... Um, in a way, like her and my dad did save my life because I had some original parents that just really didn't give a shit about, you know, the shit. Um, so yeah, it, it sucked. (laughs) It definitely sucks. It's something I think about a lot. Um, this necklace got her ashes in this necklace, um, that I carry around with with me every day. Um, and it, and it's, it's weird, but I do feel like she is here. Like when it, when it happened, like it was immediately like a different feeling Mm -hmm. like i don't want to say it was like a weight lifted off my chest because that would definitely be the wrong words um but it was just like the feeling aura of life humanity everything was just different since that point Mm -hmm. and obviously it's been different since he's been here too Um, my son being born but like that point right there it's like i do feel her here Mm-hmm. Like, I feel her presence, like, Absolutely. it feels like it went from, like, uh, me- like being in my head, like, mentally, like, damn, you know, your mom's gonna go, mm-hmm. um, to, like, okay, now I feel like she's with me everywhere I go, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So that's kind of the solace that, that I do have from that situation. And the last thought on that, because I imagine, you know, you guys um, have something about this <laughs> whole life thing to say, because, like, this is, it's just real life shit, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um... I find it funny to bring it back to to being a little bit funny mm-hmm. is that I I think like immediately if this is how it works like immediately after someone passes away and now they're with you and they're seeing everything that you do mm-hmm. I think my mom's having a hell of a time like watching the way I drive sorry oh, um, oh. <laughs> like you know seeing all the weird things I do on a daily basis like the random outbursts um of just funny shit that I have like the conversations that I have with my friends um, hopefully she's not in the room for that. <laughs> <laughs> um she's probably like really Yo, Joe, fine just in, take a step out to the right. room real quick <laughs> I, I think like what what she's finally seeing who i actually am because you know i moved out to troy she was still in schenectady um i i wasn't going there too too much because like i said we kind of um went separate ways you know the relationship did get a little sour um, so I find it, you know, funny that now she's seeing, catching up on everything that I am doing in life. Mm-hmm. And it's probably hilarious for her, especially <laughs> the driving part. Because, like, every time she was in the car with me, I drove, like, mm-hmm. you know, like a little old man. Like, you know, I made yeah, careful because I don't want to get yelled at by Madre. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, now she's seeing me drive normally. She's probably like, wow, what the fuck? <laughs> He's going to kill somebody one day. I don't drive, like, that bad. Yeah, like, does. I just, no. you know. <laughs> but, you know, she was a little overreactive. Um, like whenever I did hit the brake a little too hard, I mean, or go a little too fast, she's like, "Ooh!" Like, you know, grab on the song real yeah. quick. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was that was some real shit. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'll say, man, is through um, through life is death, and through death is life. Um, in all truth, um, it's all I'm part sorry. of the show. Yeah, it's you know? all part of it. Um, man, I will tell you, it's nothing like. Um, 
you know, I never even said this publicly, man. I just lost my mother over a little over a year ago. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, in the same, like, I didn't put it on any type of social site or anything. Yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah, even yeah. think any of my family members did because of just how guarded my family was and how, you know what I mean? Like, just yeah, how we are. Yeah. But um, in all truth, man, I know it's nothing like it. That's why I, even in one of the episodes, I even suggested as one of the things that somebody does with their life, you know what I mean? Out of the five things that I would tell somebody to do with their life is to make sure that they have a relationship with their mother. You understand what I'm saying? And that line hit me pretty deeply. You know <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Saying, like, if you um, go back and watch the episode, look at my truth. face. Yeah, man. Because, I didn't want to um, say it on that episode specifically, mm-hmm. but that mm-hmm. line definitely... Yeah, real. I mean, it, it, it sucked because, like, mm-hmm. it was like that. Mm-hmm. You know, my dad said, you know, you got to do this. Like, mm-hmm. you got to you gotta make things right. Mm-hmm. Someone else was telling me you got to make things right. I'm seeing it, you know, a little more in TV and mm-hmm. movies that I'm watching. Mm-hmm. And it just didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I got all those fucking signs Mm -hmm. and I didn't act. Mm -hmm. And that's the part that's going to be with me for forever. But it's like I said, I'm just, the only thing I hope I can do is get it done in this life. Mm -hmm. And she'll be proud and we'll have that conversation. Absolutely. When we have that conversation. You know what I mean? If it's, you know, 10 years from now, God forbid, or if Mm -hmm. it's, you know. 50, Absolutely, 60 years man. from now, yeah. after a good, long, successful life. Then yeah. life is life, man. If I could tell you anything, <laughs> being an elder statesman, you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, real talk. Like, you go elder statesman. Shit. Elder crazy. statesman. Like, like, real talk, man. You yeah. go through some shit. Like, you know, really go through some shit. And man. even with your family. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? So, like, the truth is, is, like, when we think about shit like that, when it comes to our family, we didn't pick them. Even, so, when we when we go through shit, like, even though my mother was my mother or your father is your father or your brother is your brother, whoever... We didn't get to pick them. You understand what right, I'm right, saying? Right. So everything that I get to go through, you know what I mean? They get to be there and see it, you know what I mean? And learn, you know what I mean, with me. And every accomplishment that I have, you know what I mean? Like, they're going to feel like they're a part of. You right, understand what right. I'm saying? But my problems, you know what I'm saying? They're going to highlight like a motherfucker. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? But, you know, you just just understand and, and believe, man. I believe that it's all... It's all a part of it like you yeah. know I'm supposed to it's the experience yeah, man. it really is man like I might not be at my because listen man I wasn't at I wasn't the best version of myself in many yeah. moments of my life you know what I mean that were probably very meaningful for right, me right, right. and for the other person but I know for me you know what I mean I gained an experience to be able to reflect and be better reflect you know what I mean like real yeah. shit you know what I mean like use my my hindsight to be my foresight. You understand what I'm saying? Like, learn from some shit, man, and fucking, you know what I mean, be better then. You know what I'm saying? And like you said, that presence always being around me. I already know Mama Love. You know, like, 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 you know what I mean? It was crazy, like, because before, like, like, I'm not gonna lie, because, like, while Mm -hmm. she was, like, passing away, Mm -hmm. like, I did feel very empty. And I mean, Mm -hmm. I felt very empty from the situation. Mm -hmm. But it was, like, immediately and in different moments, like, you can feel, Mm -hmm. like, you feel full, like, Mm -hmm. you feel a little whole, because, like, you, you can feel them, like, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, But, yeah, do you have anything to add to the topic, Matt? No. Nah, uh, I mean, <laughs> nah, I get it. Nah, bro. yeah, I, get I was. It. Uh, that, yeah. You guys were saying a lot of shit just now, and it was smoking me. But um, mm-hmm. so I kind of had a similar situation with my father that you had with your mother. We were definitely um not on the best of terms mm-hmm. when he passed. Uh, but one line that you definitely said it was uh, you saw the signs, but you never took them. Yeah, for me, yeah, my father wasn't there when I was young and when I was mm-hmm. growing up. And like, I think like the oldest memory, the two oldest memories I have of him. Were one, so my brother's a dickhead. So <laughs> we, I was I was maybe like three or four. Juju, juju, and we're at my father's house, and so we're getting ready to eat dinner. My mm-hmm. my brother takes my cup of uh, chocolate milk, puts it in the microwave, puts it back on the table. I come up to the table, and all of a sudden I drink this micro or drink this milk, puke everywhere, <laughs> and so my father's smoking me, smoking me. And the other memory I have is I'm at his house and his dog, like, I think he had Roddy's or Pitbull's. Mm-hmm. I don't remember when, which. Um, his dog bites me in the face. Oh, shit. And so my mother says, like, you either get rid of those dogs or they're not allowed back at your house. Like, you're not going to see your kids at your house no more. And he chose the dogs. That was, like, the, one of the earliest memories I had of him. And it wasn't like he came over to my house and chopped it up with us. No, he just cut ties. Mm-hmm. And so I always had a very sour relationship with my father for most of my life. And that also made it sour for me and my brother growing up. 
because he loved my father. And so it, he kind of took it as, in my eyes, that he couldn't see his father because of me. So me and my brother early on had a very bad relationship too. And so later on in life, my father definitely tried getting back into my life. Mm -hmm. And it, it was because he was fighting cancer for 16 years. And so he, I think he knew his time was diminishing mm -hmm. and he was trying to reconcile for shit. And, but he, over the years, he never made it better. So he did it really quickly and I just pushed him back. Mm -hmm. And so for like the last three years of his life, he was trying to get back into mine. Mm -hmm. And I just kept denying him, denying him. And it was like, and one of the things, the last conversation I had with him, he told me it was my mother's fault. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's like, you're not about to talk about my mom. When she was the one raising me, she had two yeah. jobs. She was putting food in my stomach and clothes on my back when she was going and couldn't eat or nothing. Mm -hmm. And so I pretty much told him off and told him that. And that was the last convo I had with him. And so I always was very mad after he died because I never got to have that real convo of just sitting closure. back of closure. Mm -hmm. And I, the day he died, my brother was going to the hospital and he hit me up. He's like, yo, you want to go? And I'm like, yeah, I always took it as a, he'll be, right. there'll be Come another out. day. Mm -hmm. There'll be another day. Yeah. So I went, I had a good day that day, low key. I was chilling, was chilling with my boys. We went and played basketball. We were killing it. We were smoking people in basketball. And all of a sudden, it's like 11 30, 12 o'clock at night. We're about to hit up McDonald's. And I just look at my phone, and my brother says he passes. And I've never had such a feeling of anger in my life. Not sadness, it was immediate anger. And luckily, I had my boys around me, so kept it off uplifting and shit. But yeah, it was just, it's that, it's that sense of regret that you never had that last combo. We established a whole game plan for that. Bro. And, but, <laughs> but no, it was, it's, it's just the words you were saying were definitely smoking me. That's why I was quiet. Yeah, no, my bad, And, man. um, yeah, so it's just, it's I never real, got that bro. sense of closure. And so that always sits with me. And I never got that feeling of they're there with me just because mm -hmm. we've always been separate. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that, that's also soured a lot of my relationships with my other siblings on that side of and the that's, family. And that's, and that's kind of like, I feel that a lot. Um, just because, like, I was, like, really close to my mom growing yeah, up. Yeah, and I, yeah. Um, and I kind of feel like, you know, it sucks that the last, our last two years together was, like, me being very distant. Right. And me kind of just, you know, you know. Yeah. Just, I just, yeah, I just yeah, wanted yeah. her to be better. Mm -hmm. And I think I just took the definitely, definitely easily took the, the wrong <laughs> route. Not either, there's no question about it. I definitely took the wrong route. Um, and I don't know, man, that's just something that's living with me, gets to me at certain points of the day. So like, mm -hmm. I guess my best advice to people coming from this situation and what I'm obviously going to take moving forward is that, you know, if you got beef with someone that you actually do love or at one point loved a lot, like I'm talking about like, you know, family wise, like people that you yeah. were actually really close with, you know, brothers, friends, whatever, you know. You you never know when it's the end. Mm -hmm. You know That's what it. I'm saying? Like you just really never know, cause like like you said with your dad, like you thought like it was gonna be like oh you know there'll be another day. I thought the same shit. Like I thought you know my mom was gonna be forced to get better, yeah. um, because of the center that she was at. She was gonna come out. And even if she did come out and she was still sick, I'd at least get that time. And that's the thing. And cause it, it happened fun. way too yeah. fucking quick. It was literally like they gave my mom three months to live and she passed away five days into that. Yeah. Like I thought because I, I got the news like, hey, your mom got, you know, three months to live. I was sad, but I was always, always also like, OK, well, at least I get time to spend with her before she does go. Like, you know, we can enjoy some shit together or we can have conversation and it just happened, you know, five days into that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And mine's yeah. honestly the opposite of all that because <laughs> Slenderman over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, mine was the opposite because my father, like they gave him a year to live and he kept beating it and it was 16 years later. Right. So every right. time he kept going back, I just always kept thinking like. He's going to beat it again. I'm right. like, that man's low-key been a trooper. <laughs> like, right. I, out of all the differences we had, like, I know he's been a trooper through that shit. So, yeah. I always thought one day down the line we would have that conversation. And then, yeah, it's it's one of my biggest regrets. It always sits on the back of my head. And so, always ha just have that conversation with your family, bro. Yeah. Always talk to and them. And I, yeah. like... You never know. 
Never I mean, know. You never know, right. right? Because the way that it happened. I mean, like the truth is, is that I believe that it, it's never a perfect time. You know what I mean? It's never. Yeah. It's never streamlined or cookie cutter. You know what I mean? How that actually goes, but yeah. you know, you just really, really never know, man. Um, especially you know, primarily focus on focusing on if if people already got like some health concerns. You understand what I'm saying? Like yeah. because for me, what was crazy, man. I'll be honest. Another reason why I never really like to share it is because my mom went in for a surgery that was supposed to be something that anybody walked in and get walks back out of oh shit and you understand what i'm saying yeah, like it yeah. was you know what i mean like it's like she put her turned her life over to somebody else that she trusted you know what i mean and it's like what the fuck you right. understand what i'm saying right. so it's like some of that shit man it's just amazing because yeah. you could never really really be prepared no you understand what you I'm could saying? Never really prepare like you know it, what right. i mean like in no kind of way you know what i mean and it's yeah. like you just try to and like you said so if you love you need to love who you love and take care of who you love. You know what I mean? Um, once you realize, See past a lot of bullshit, yeah, man, yeah. that life is short. You know, yeah. really? life, you know life I mean? is definitely life is short. short as fuck. fuck. Um, would you rather be in a party with all your exes, or would you rather be in a party full of all your enemies? Who's starting this one off? Oh, I mean, man. I can because my answer is pretty simple. Wow! Because it's a lot of shiesty motherfuckers, yeah. no matter what. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I haven't dated too many people, like date date. Okay. So I mean, I'm cool with that. Okay. But yeah. I also I feel like I don't got enemies. Like, okay. I I don't really have nobody I hate hate. I got people I dislike. There so I might people that just hate my you. Own. Oh, I, I, yo, if you hate me, we can deal with yo, it. I'm in, I'm, in the, I'm in the room. Oh, Say no. <laughs> as long as I can bring my crowd, uh -huh. and then y'all just got to deal with it, sure. But I mean, No, like, it's just you. Me with all my enemies? Put, send me with the exes. I don't know. I guess. Um, I, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go with the exes because I do, unlike Matt, I do have some enemies out there. Um... <laughs> Not people I'm scared of, but I know people where if they band together, like, on some, like, Marvel... Marvel you know, Alliance shit? Yeah, like, if they band together, I'm pretty sure they could fuck me up. Or do. Or there's probably people that hate me I don't even know about. That's true, too, yeah. Um, there could be people who really hate me. There could be a real dangerous motherfucker that just hates me. Because you don't good. know what you did to somebody. Right. It could have been something little yeah. to me, but something crazy to know. Maybe, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, you don't know how they family feel about so it. So I'm going to... You know what I mean? Like, whatever. But I'm going to go with the exes because I do know every single one of them. Yeah. And I do know all Fuck that. Them. We could party, I guess. Yeah, let's get lit. Like, I'm not saying, like, we're going to do anything, but, like... <laughs> Whatever, we could party. I mean, whatever. Let's let's fuck it. It'll be a weird, whack ass time, but yeah, yeah it'll be a whack party, party. But it's a party. But at least I'm not like, you know what I mean? Like, it'd be a, like what kind of party is that? I'm just, you feel me? Yeah, is that even a party anymore? Yeah. All your enemies? Yeah, I'm finessing the exes. I'm yeah, the exes. I, I feel like I can I finesse. I don't really want to rub shoulders with the enemies. I just yeah. don't. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you gotta keep them close though. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like. I do have one more question though, mm -hmm. just real quick. Mm -hmm. All right, so would you rather fuck a woman that's fucked a thousand dudes, uh -huh. or would you rather fuck a woman that fucked an animal? I'm happy you asked this question. <laughs> right. you were, not like that because you was mulling <laughs> over some funny ass questions, right? Because listen, I was already thinking this totally depends on the situation. You feel me? Like, cause check it out. Check it out. If Wait, I'm, hold on. Follow me. Now, follow me. We right? listening, baby. Follow me, right? Now, Better with time. We follow if, if I'm, There it is. So if I'm looking <laughs> to have some fun, oh, right? If I'm just looking to have an experience, right? I'm going with the, the girl that had the thousand partners. Because she, she knows something, you understand she what I'm knows saying? something. Like if yeah, I wanted, okay. like if I'm looking, she's for, probably cleaning the, if, the gas tank. Yeah, no matter what, okay. you understand right. what I'm saying? Like if yeah, I'm looking for yeah. something that I'm trying to, you know what I mean? Like I already got a girl, so you know. Right, what right, right. We're in our like, hypothetical world. Like, 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 but no, you know? like I'm only playing. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. No, for real. Um, no, man, I want that. I don't. I don't really. I don't really care about. I have such a fantastic taste. You know what I mean? Like I. You know what I'm saying? Like, but hold on. But you said that there's another, yeah, yes, the there's other a flip side. Yeah, the flip side is, is that, come on, man, I'm not really into the, to the bestiality too much, but I'd rather take one animal where 
Shit, you're an animal anyway. Who knows? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> See, <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. Who, Humans who, are animals. Yeah, who knows so who time, says what, what animal it was? What she she could have just fucked a dude and you called yes, him an animal. One guy. What? No, no, but an actual animal. Horse. Like, man. come on, bro. Like an actual. She taking a horse, bro, Matt. You know I'm what a... I, bro? You know what I mean <laughs> when I say animal. I'm not definitely not talking about another human being. Elephant I'm talking strong. about whatever. Man. Uh, I'm, still going with, I'm still going with. I'm still going with. I'm still going with a thousand. Yeah, thousand, so I'm, I'm going with the so, animal. But I'll, I'll tell you no, why in a I'll, second. You can tell right now because I'm going with the chick who got with a thousand dudes. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna wrap my shit. That's really yeah, it, bro. That's it. Tell yeah. your story. Yeah. Oh, so <laughs> listen, if she's fucked an animal, man, she is one wild ass woman. All right, uh-huh. and that's why I like. You know, if I'm gonna have sex, I want to have the craziest, greatest time possible. And well, yeah, you know, if a girl's been with a thousand dudes, but, you know, the girl that fucked one animal, maybe she wasn't with a thousand dudes. Maybe she was with a couple. A thousand animals. Yeah. <laughs> one animal. One animal. Yeah. <laughs> um, she, she listen, animal on table. she's, fr- wow, she's, uh, <laughs> she's, she's a little weird, but, like, I think the time that we're going to have is going to be great because she's different. She's wow. You know, no, she's wild. He said no, bro. <laughs> she, she's she's wet and wild. Right. You know. Right. Uh, but with that being said, <laughs> with that being said, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, share, um, sell your souls um, to us because we got a lot coming. You know, shout out to Belgium, Australia, Ghana. Um, shout out to everybody, every fucking person that is a fan of our shit. We are going to close this year strong, and we are going to enter next year and have the year of our lives. And we hope you're with us. Prayers up to everyone in the Middle East right now. Going yes, some prayers shit. up to all the, <laughs> yes. everything going on. The world is a shitty place right now. We are, we are here praying for you. Have a good one. <laughs> hey, yo, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> fucking... Bro, I forgot.